Top 5 TV Show Dads Who Died Welcome to Past Tests. Today in this video, we'll discuss about Top 5 TV Show Dads Who Died. But before starting the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any of our videos. Number 1. James Avery Fresh Prince of Bel-Air Alright, 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 everybody out, come on. James Avery, who portrayed the commanding yet cuddly father figure on the hit 1990s sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, died at Glendale Hospital of Complications from Open Heart Surgery, he was 65. His death was confirmed by his manager, Tony Benson. Although trained as a Shakespearean actor, Avery won his widest audience in the role of Judge Philip Banks' Uncle Phil on Fresh Prince, which aired on NBC from 1990 to 1996. Ranked number 34 on TV Guide's 50 Greatest TV Dads of All Time, the Navy veteran's stern, straight arrow character provided a foil for series star Will Smith, who played the wise-cracking teenage nephew from the mean streets of West Philadelphia who moved into Uncle Phil's uptight Bel Air household. He first appeared on screen in an uncredited role in 1980's The Blues Brothers. During a career in television and film that spanned more than three decades, he lent his stentorian voice to several animated series including 1987's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and 1990's Iron Man. He also hosted the PBS travel show Going Places. He was frequently cast as a well-heeled, well-educated man who happened to be black, playing a judge on NBC's LA Law and ABC's Murder One. There you go, son. I have a uh, little surprise for you. It's my old Princeton sweatshirt. I was gonna save it until he went off to college, but I thought you might like to have it today. And the head of a Los Angeles law firm on the UPN sitcom Sparks. Dinner is served. A wop ba ba loo ba ba loo ba boom. Number two, John Witherspoon, Wayans Brothers. You ate my dinner, my mashed potatoes, that good old gravy I like, biscuits I like, or something that gravy. You ate all of that. You drink up all the milk. Don't care what kind of milk it is. John Witherspoon, an actor and comedian who played Ice Cube's father in the stoner comedy Friday 1995 and its sequels, died October 29th in Los Angeles. He was 77. Mr. Witherspoon's family issued a statement announcing the death but did not provide a cause. The actor had a prolific career, co-starring in three Friday films, appearing on the Wayans Brothers television series and voicing the grandfather in the Boondocks animated series. His film roles included I'm Gonna Get You Sucka 1988, Boomerang 1992, and Vampire in Brooklyn 1995. Hey, now. Oh, excuse me. Oh, no, it, it's cool. I, I, I'm the attendant. Oh, you can sit this one out, my brother. I'm just gonna wash my hands. And he was a frequent guest on Late Show with David Letterman. Witherspoon, who was born John Weatherspoon in Detroit in 1942, started his career as a stand-up comic and continued to play clubs throughout his life. Nobody got me pussy whip. I whips set. In one of his early roles, on Barnaby Jones, Witherspoon played a counselor at a camp for drug-addicted children alongside a young Sean Penn in Penn's first credited role. Number 3. Bernie Mac, The Bernie Mac Show uh, Any questions? Can we tell? No, you can't touch nothing. Bernie Mac blended style, authority, and a touch of self-aware bluster to make audiences laugh as well as connect with him. For Mac, who died Saturday at age 50, it was a winning mix, delivering him from a poor childhood to stardom as a stand-up comedian in films including the casino heist caper Ocean's Eleven and his acclaimed sitcom The Bernie Mac Show. Though his comedy drew on tough experiences as a black man, he had mainstream appeal. Befitting inspiration he found in a wide range of humorists, Harpo Marx, as well as Mom's Mapley, squeaky clean Red Skeleton, but also the raw Red Fox. Mac died August 9, 2008 from complications due to pneumonia in a Chicago area hospital. His publicist, Danica Smith, said in a statement from Los Angeles, she said no other details were available. Mac suffered from sarcoidosis, an inflammatory lung disease that produces tiny lumps of cells in the body's organs, but had said the condition went into remission in 2005. He recently was hospitalized and treated for pneumonia, which his publicist said was not related to the disease. Recently, Mac's brand of comedy caught him flack when he was heckled during a surprise appearance at a July fundraiser for Democratic presidential candidate and fellow Chicagoan Barack Obama. Well, that right there is a snap. It's also called a yellow threat level. And that's good for domestic disturbance, and washing of the dishes, bedtime, and pre-church. Number four. Sherman Hensley, The Jeffersons 
Sherman Hemsley, the actor who made the irascible, bigoted George Jefferson of the Jeffersons, one of television's most memorable characters and a symbol for urban upward mobility, has died. He was 74. The Philadelphia-born Hemsley first played the blustering black Harlem businessman on CBS's All in the Family before he was spun off onto the Jeffersons, which in 11 seasons from 1975 to 1985 became one of TV's most successful sitcoms, particularly noteworthy with its mostly black cast. With the gospel-style theme song of Movin' On Up, the hit show depicted the wealthy former neighbors of Archie and Edith Bunker in Queens as they made their way on New York's Upper East Side. Dick belongs in the kitchen, and you are going to be where you belong in the doghouse. <laughs> Hemsley and the Jeffersons, Isabel Sanford played his wife, often dealt with contemporary issues of racism but more frequently reveled in the sitcom archetype of a short-tempted, opinionated, patriarch trying, often unsuccessfully to control his family. His performance was Emmy and Golden Globe nominated, Sherman Alexander Hemsley, though was far less feisty. The son of a printing press working father and a factory working mother, Hemsley served in the Air Force and worked for eight years as a clerk for the Postal Service. Having studied acting as an adolescent at the Philadelphia Academy of Dramatic Arts, he began acting in New York workshops and theater companies, including the Negro Ensemble Company. For years, he kept his job at the post office while acting at night, before transitioning to acting full-time. Number 5. Peter Boyle Peter Boyle, the actor who played the hilariously grouchy father on Everybody Loves Raymond, has died. He was 71. Boyle, whose career also included a memorable role in Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein, died Tuesday evening at New York Presbyterian Hospital. He had been suffering from multiple myeloma and heart disease. While a generation of TV viewers knows him as Frank Barone, with his trademark holy crap line, Boyle had a respectable career long before Everybody Loves Raymond debuted in 1996, including a part in Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. He also was close friends with John Lennon, who was the best man at Boyle's wedding. A member of the Christian Brothers' religious order who turned to acting, the tall, prematurely balding Boyle gained notice in the title role of the 1970s sleeper hit Joe, playing an angry, murderous bigot at odds with the emerging hippie youth culture. Briefly typecast in tough, irate roles, Boyle began to escape the image as Robert Redford's campaign manager in The Candidate and left it behind entirely after Young Frankenstein, Brooks' 1974 send-up of horror films. The latter movie's defining moment came when Gene Wilder, as scientist Frederick Frankenstein, introduced his creation to an upscale audience. Boyle, decked out in tales, performed a song and dance routine to the Irving Berlin classic Put In On The Ritz. It showed another side of Boyle, one that would be best exploited in Raymond as the curmudgeon Lee Frank Barone. He's just obnoxious in a nice way, just for laughs, Boyle said of the character in a 2001 interview. It's a very sweet experience having this success happen at a time when you basically go back over your life and see every mistake you ever made. Thank you guys for watching. If you like our video, then hit the subscribe button to never miss out on any of our videos. See you next time.